Let's look at chemistry piece 1124. And I'm going to give you a, sh a lesson right now that will help you with pages 7 through 10 and E through F. And honestly, there's a lot of information covered in those pages. And sometimes just reading it, your mind kind of goes to mush and you say, whoa, what did I just read? <laughs> and it can seem kind of confusing. Now, it was covered a little bit in physical science, and we did touch on this a couple paces ago in 11.22, but now we're going to really dig in, and uh, maybe it's time for a quick review and a, and a tip on two things that I think if you memorize these tips, okay, at least write them down on a 3x5 card, what I have here on the board, <clears throat> and if you can memorize it, it'll help you, all right? I was looking ahead to the checkup, the self-test, the pace test and you, um, you are expected to be able to like take an element like tin knowing that it has 50 electrons and be able to figure out what its electron configuration would be all right without using your periodic table just looking at just drawing this by memory and knowing that the number is 50. so let's walk you through what you need to do to do that all right you with me <clears throat> We've covered this before, physical science, and a couple of paces ago, but let's just review. There are four possible sublevels: the S, the P, the D, and the F. I had illustrated it. It's not a very, it's not an accurate model, but illustrated it with small ball, another ball around that, another ball around that. Remember that? And uh, so these <clears throat> have different number because of their size. They have a different number of tracks running around it okay by the way can you do that with your fingers go opposite directions Whew. one orbital means there's two tracks so there's two electrons one going this way one going this way the p has three orbitals each of those three orbitals could have two electrons so three times two six maximum electrons in a p sublevel. d is five so there's ten F is 7 <clears throat> for a total of 14 electrons in the F. Now, for me, the easiest way to remember this is these are just all the odd, the first four odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay? Then you just double those and that's how you get the electrons. So that's a little easier for me than just memorizing the number of electrons. Now here's another, um, this is called the diagonal rule, diagonal rule. Yeah, the diagonal rule. And it helps us determine the order in which each of these um, sublevels fill up. So we're going to draw a diagonal that comes up like this, hits the 1s, okay? The next diagonal just hits the 2s, okay? But then the next electrons go into, here's another diagonal coming up, into the 2p. After the 2p is full, they go to 3s. All right, so the key in drawing, the first of all, notice in drawing this, I did 1s, 2s2, 2p, 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 and then 3s, 3p, 3d. Okay, so notice the first energy level only has s, the second energy level has s and p, s, p, d. We get to level four, we have s, p, d, f. 5 also just says SPDF. Okay, that's the maximum. We don't have anything beyond that. But the order in which they fill um, is different, and the pace talks about that a little bit more, and actually the way the periodic table is laid out shows us which of these sections is filling up. But this rule helps us remember, okay, after 1s is 2, then we fill 2s. When 2s is full, we fill 2p. When 2p is full, we fill 3s. When 3s is full, here comes the arrow, we fill 3p, and then 4s. Then we come back and fill 3d, followed by 4p, followed by 5s. Okay? <clears throat> Then we come back after 5s, then we start to fill in 4d, 5p, 6s. Then we come back and fill in the 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. And then kind of round it out here. If we needed to go all the way out this far, actually I don't think the pace shows us going out that far. 
But that helps us see the order in which they fill. And then all we have to remember is, okay, a P is worth six electrons. The Ds are worth 10 electrons, all right? So now, just to give myself some room here, I'm going to erase this. You, have, you wrote this down already, right? You got that, or you got it memorized? Okay, so let's take 10. So we're gonna first do 1s2, and then we're gonna do 2s2. So far I have four electrons. 2p, we're gonna fill that with six. And then 3s2, and then 3p6, 4s2, 3d, and d was 10. All right, we need to stop and count. How many do we have so far here? 10, 12, 18, 26, 27, 8, 29, so we have 30. So we still need to go uh, 20 more. So I have 3D10, then we come back and we do some, this all continues, okay? <laughs> um, after 3D was four, 4P, four which is six. And then we do 5S2. Then we go back out here and do 4D10. Let's see how far we've gotten now, all right? What did I say that was, 30? 12, 18, 19, 26, 27, 18, 30. All right, so we have 30 to there, 40, oh, we're getting close. I have 48, do you see that? Six and two, 10, I have 48. So how many more do I need? I only need two more electrons and I'll have the 50. So where do those two electrons go? Well, I filled 4D, so, the next electrons are going to go into 5P, but even though P can hold 6, I'm not putting 6 in there. I'm only putting 2. Okay? Because now if you add up all of the electrons, you are at <clears throat> 50. Now I want you to notice something on your periodic table, okay? You need to know how to do this for the checkup self-test pace test because it specifically tells you do not use your periodic table to do it. <laughs> In the homework, they have three of these types of problems for you to do and they don't say not to use your table, but I don't want you to look at it except to get the number of electrons. <clears throat> and then after you've done all the work, you can actually look at here and every time, all of these are filling the S's. And so this, these two columns here are the S's, which is two electrons, all right? All of these are filling the P's, and how, look how many there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? In, in little tiny print under these letters, you see the electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Blah, 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 P3, blah, 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 P4, P5, P6. You see that? All right. So they're filling in, in order. And then we're filling in 4S2, and then 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we go back to 4P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5S1, 2, 4D, 4D is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then look, right here is tin, SN. I said I wrote the word tin, but tin is SN and it's element 50. And look, right there is the configuration. 4D10, 5P2. Isn't that cool? All right. So we see this is the complete electron configuration. Now, if you look at your chart here, you'll notice something else, and that is that they have an abbreviation for that, right? They took out all of this from here to here, and they called it, I gotta find it again, KR. In square brackets, followed by five, S2, 4D10, 5P2. So you know, where did, what did, where did that KR come from? Well, if you look over here, 
you'll see the KR configuration, but then there's an AR in front of that, so that means you go up to argon above it, and you take that configuration and tack it on in front of that, and then that says you want neon in front of that. <laughs> so all of these noble gases become part of our cheat code for the abbreviated form of doing this, okay? <clears throat> So I get a little practice, tried to do less on this problems here. Let's see, I put a bright orange tab so that I can see where this is on page F. It says, write, use the diagonal rule to write the complete configuration for selenium. And then write the electron in shorthand. That's what this is, the shorthand notation where you put the code in first and then just the last part. And then it says the complete electron configuration for strontium, so it would be like this, except you're using the element strontium, the shorthand notation, indium, shorthand notation. All right, so they're letting you practice with three of them, but I want you to go with me to the checkup. You're going to do the same thing here. It says for chlorine, it tells you atomic number 17, selenium, atomic number 34, but they say do not use your periodic table. So you can't copy those codes from there. You need to have this written down on a 3x5 card or that you've written down on scrap paper and you can see the order in which they fill. Okay? And then you just have to have memorized that S is 2, P is 6, D is 10, and F is, when, if you get to that, F is the 14. All right. I know that's a little confusing. But uh, hopefully with that, and actually the rest of the page that I skipped over to this point is just a lot of um, knowledge. There's not a lot of problem solving, and I don't think anything too confusing. It's just memorizing what parts of the table are what, and uh, some of the different characteristics. And again, it should be review if you had physical science. And so hopefully that part's easy. I'm looking ahead though, and there's definitely some stuff that we're gonna have to make some videos for to help you finish Pace 1124.